A polymath is an individual whose expertise spans a significant number of different subject areas. Such a person is known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. The term Renaissance man or woman is often associated with polymath. Another term for polymath is wizard. <laughs> You are a wizard, Harry. Your game is the one behind everyone else's, and it is the game that is played simultaneously within and throughout all of the other games being played. You are the fish in the water who sees the water. Leonardo da Vinci was a historically notable fish who saw the water he was swimming in. Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519, was an Italian polymath whose areas of interest included invention, painting, sculpting, architecture, science, music, mathematics, engineering, literature, anatomy, geology, astronomy, botany, writing, history, and cartography. He is widely considered one of the greatest painters of all time and epitomizes the Renaissance humanist ideal. I attended the Da Vinci exhibit in Los Angeles last year, and it was a transcendent experience. An enormous immersive room, a 360 degree projection room, the mind of Da Vinci coming to life from all directions. The first 10 minutes of this enlightening exhibit was a visual bath of sacred geometry. The sacred geometric shapes and keys that da Vinci unlocked and applied in all of his many wondrous works. Perhaps you've heard of the da Vinci effect. The term da Vinci effect refers to a concept inspired by the wide range of interests and accomplishments of da Vinci. It's a mindset which embodies the pursuit of knowledge across multiple fields with the understanding that exploring diverse subjects enriches creativity and innovation. A few key aspects of the da Vinci effect are 1. Curiosity and learning An insatiable curiosity about the world and a continuous desire for learning. Curiosity is care, care and attention. Curiosity alone is a master key. There are no limitations on a curious individual. Curiosity will propel a person to the finish line. The smartest people alive are relentlessly curious. 2. An interdisciplinary approach Cross-disciplinary knowledge leads to groundbreaking ideas and inventions. Da Vinci saw no strict boundaries between sciences and arts. He applied principles of one field to advance another, such as using his observations of light and shadow in nature to inform his painting techniques. 3. Integration of theory and practice applying theoretical knowledge to practical experiments and vice versa. Da Vinci's notebooks are filled with theoretical musings alongside practical inventions and observations from nature. 4. Innovation and Creativity A mindset that encourages innovative thinking and creativity by drawing on a broad spectrum of knowledge. Da Vinci's work, from the design of flying machines to anatomical studies, exemplifies innovative thinking fueled by diverse interests. 5. Holistic Learning A holistic approach to learning and problem solving that emphasizes the interconnectedness of various disciplines. The Da Vinci Effect suggests that to truly excel and innovate, one must understand and appreciate the broader context of their work. So the Da Vinci Effect, therefore, is more than just about being talented in multiple areas. It's about how diverse knowledge and interdisciplinary exploration can enhance creativity, problem-solving abilities, and innovation. It encourages individuals to broaden their horizons, remain curious, and see connections between seemingly unrelated fields, leading to more holistic understanding and novel solutions. The Da Vinci Effect is a mindset. A mindset that anyone can develop. 
And if there were a crash course on developing this mindset, it would be ceremonial magic. Specifically, the ceremonial magic and grade work of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. I say this because the Golden Dawn system of magic is a detailed roadmap to developing the human energy body in a thorough and balanced way. If you follow all the steps, you will experience the full power of magic made manifest in your life. You will learn the secrets of the universe, and you will understand how to apply them to create a life beyond your wildest imaginings. The Golden Dawn created a grading system, a grading system that guided practitioners through an extensive series of studies, rituals, and projects. The original structure of the Golden Dawn was hierarchical. There were three main levels, the Outer Order, the Inner Order, and the Third Order. The Outer Order was for beginners, consisting of an introductory grade and four elemental grades. The elemental grades corresponded to Earth, Air, Water, and Fire. The grades also corresponded to the Four Worlds, or Levels of Existence of Kabbalah. Additionally, there was a Sixth, or Portal Grade which led to adeptship. The grades were as follows. Grade 1, Neophyte. Grade 2, Zelator, corresponding to Earth. Grade 3, Theoricus, corresponding to Air. Grade 4, Practicus, corresponding to Water. Grade 5, Philosophus, corresponding to Fire. Grade 6, Portal, Spirit. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn developed a very powerful system, but the order itself had numerous weaknesses, which eventually led to its dissolution. The value of the Golden Dawn system, however, is still recognized and is taken even more seriously than before. A brilliant magician by the name of Liam Thomas Christopher improved upon the curriculum, and this improved curriculum can be found in the book Kabbalah, Magic, and the Great Work of Self-Transformation. Quote, the work of becoming an enlightened being requires more than the influx of spiritual light. The physical, mental, intuitive, and instinctive aspects of the mind must be prepared for that influx. The work of the outer order is a slow, thorough, and sometimes painful preparation for this event. It requires restructuring the way one functions on all levels. Not everyone who starts the process will make it through. If you dare to begin, it is important to take seriously what is happening every day and thoroughly examine every issue that arises. Impatience is the first demon to deal with, and many such potential setbacks must be dealt with along the way." End quote. Many aspiring magicians have asked me the simplest, most important question. Where do I start? Well, if you would like a step-by-step, start-to-finish blueprint on how to build your solar body, Kabbalah, magic, and the great work of self-transformation is where to start. Quote, the curriculum in this book, as I have stated before, is a carefully improved version which takes into account the failings of the original order. First of all, it provides a minimum number of months for each grade, giving your daily rituals adequate time to induce change. Second, I have added imagination exercises that are specifically tailored to stimulate the level of the soul that corresponds to your current grade. Third, you are required to keep a journal of your experiences, and to this I have added specific topics that must be reported on at key times. This new grade system makes sure that the rituals stimulate your dormant faculties and that additional control measures help to keep the ego in check, guarding against inevitable imbalances." End quote. This curriculum is magic college. Here are all the bases one must cover during the probationary grade. This is the neophyte semester. The four fundamentals of becoming a magician are daily ritual, study, magical diary, and physical exercise. 
dedication being the key ingredient. Daily ritual, study, magical diary, and physical exercise must be done every day without exception. Expanding on the details, the daily neophyte formula is the fourfold breath, the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, the middle pillar, and the neophyte meditation. Additional exercises are the four adorations, the daily tarot card, and silence exercises. Written assignments, outline of the neophyte ritual, diary assignments, magical motto, compendium of gods. Projects, labeling the tree of life, neophyte temple diagrams, optional implements, the robe, the lamp, the censer, the book. There is also a list of required reading. The required readings are as follows. The first knowledge lecture from the Golden Dawn, pages 50 through 59. The Tree of Life by Israel Regardi. The Mystical Kabbalah by Dion Fortune. The Sacred Magic of Ancient Egypt by Rosemary Clark. Z1, The Enterer of the Threshold, from the Golden Dawn, pages 331 through 362. Z3, The Symbolism of the Ignition of the Candidate, from the Golden Dawn, pages 363 through 375. There you have it. Once again, I strongly encourage this book. I have two primary intentions for this channel. One, express the beauty and power of magic and the universe through art for all to experience. And two, communicate in an organized way how people can learn and apply magic in their everyday lives. The next guided ceremony on this channel will be the Rose Cross. The Rose Cross is kind of tricky for a lot of people. Having said that, I am really taking my time on this one to make sure all the animations and vocals do the ritual justice. My flaming sword meditation was overall well received, but I did rush the edit a bit, and the results confused a few people. The traditional Kabbalistic Tree of Life is meant to be reversed as you see it in relation to your body, meaning that the pillar of severity is on your right and the pillar of mercy is on your left. Now, there are modern approaches, however, that have mercy on the right and severity on the left. So, which is correct? Well, the traditional way corresponds to more of the symbolism. One aspect of this being that the right hand is usually stronger than the left. The right hand is meant to project and the left hand is meant to receive. Overall, the traditional way is technically more accurate, but the modern approach is not wrong. The modern setup is one legitimate way of doing it. Furthermore, if you are a left-handed person, it may be much more natural for you to adopt severity on the left and mercy on the right. These guided rituals and meditations are not the end-all be-all. They are here to inspire and show you what's possible. They are here to guide your basic movements, vocalizations, and visualizations until you understand them well enough to perform a circuit on your own and with your own mind. To dispel confusion, I say this. Mage space aligns with the traditional setup severity on the right, and mercy on the left. Going forward, all of the Kabbalistic work on this channel will reflect that. Thank you for watching. If this video tickled the strings of your soul, tapping like so others can have that same sensation would be dope. If you are feeling particularly thankful today, contributing monetarily via super thanks is a very helpful and much appreciated expression. To continue on this journey of self-development, subscribe. That is all. Once again, thank you for watching.